Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining. We have here Pietro Di Prizzi, who will be in conversation with uh, Luca Trevisani. I'll leave the word to Giulia at this time, my colleague who will introduce Pietro and Luca. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Gaia. Hello, everyone. I'm more than enthusiastic to the Castro. Tonight we lost this conversation between one of our fellows, Pietro Librizzi, graduated at Goldsmith College. Um, hi, Pietro, uh, who works with uh, most of all painting, but also music and cinema and uh, the funded uh, um, Casa Piana Microcentro in uh, Petrale Soprana, uh, a project space that we really appreciate, that we appreciate as, um, as we really like the, the practice of the other visual artist in conversation with Pietro, uh, Luca Trevisani. Uh, thank you, Luca, for joining us tonight. The, um, another artist with a very uh, wide research uh, ranging between uh, sculpture, video and crosses borderline disciplines such as performing arts, graphics, design, experimental cinema and architecture. So now I, I leave you the, the word. So thank you and enjoy. We're gonna start. Uh, so I've learned that um, we both cook, uh, like cooking and explore cooking as a, as a way of making things and as a very human thing. And Luca said very beautiful words uh, about cooking. Uh, I think you said it's the most advanced technology of human beings. Uh, is that correct, Luca? You said uh, something? Yeah, like yeah. I, sw I swear I said that I wrote that yeah I did a show in in Köln in Germany a few years ago and also a kind of um, an Italian version of it at the base the artist run space in Florence and it was called Caldo where I I don't know as an artist as a sculptor I try to to cook because we are made by flames I would love to say we are the, the only and unique animals that use that. I mean, by cooking our meals, we became who we are. Let's say, let's put it this way. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sharing now the images from. Okay, I'm, I'm seeing that. And these are, these works are, I don't know how to say, like bioplastics. So it's a kind of a plastic, a material I've been doing in, by myself in the kitchen. With all ingredients that are coming from, you know, harvest or something like that. So the idea was to, I mean, it's not about ludism or being against technology, but on the other way around is a way to rewrite the history and the genealogy of technology, which is what is really like designing our way of being. So. I don't know, the archaic, it's not something we have in our past, but it's in our future. It's the way we are designing our relationship with the environment is in a very general term. Yeah, I, I agree with these uh, views. And uh, I also explored, uh, I started exploring cooking some years ago when uh -huh. I was working with the sugar. Um, in a sort of a mix between fire and uh, and the link to the the sweets uh, and the, and pleasure and uh, I worked with isoma which uh, you worked with as well uh, first in this exhibition where I made two works uh, and then in collaboration with Gaia Di Lorenzo for our exhibition in Jupiter Woods uh, which was called Sitting Amongst where we also uh, talked about cooking both as a way of relating to each other and also as a material of the work. In, uh, in this exhibition, we used the uh, normal sugar with, with, without isomalt, which made it more um, sort of real and uh, relatable maybe. And, uh, 
this was uh, all poured onto this beautiful table which we constructed and uh, had a dinner on and um, it was very interesting to take part of in a dinner where uh, we were cooking at the same time for for guests to be, to eat and then for guests to enjoy as these were made also during the dinner creating a, an interesting dynamics of danger and uh, um, um, surprise and uh, um, yeah it was very very interesting and um, and what yeah. were you cooking what were we you eating what were you eating all together on this table yeah we, we had a beautiful dinner we were eating uh, traditional italian food of course and, okay uh, plus the, the sugar and we were going around and trying to avoid the, i was cooking with a big pot and then pouring on, onto the table to make these patterns on with different colors and uh, encasing objects that people brought to the dinner that had a significant uh, role for them with the food and the memory and uh, the act of being at the table mm -hmm. and um, that was uh, also accompanied with tales we read the tales from the calvino book of italian folk tales okay so the rainforest a bit more this uh, impact of the table and cooking and join these three things together into one um, um, we could say um, scenography it was mm -hmm. a an immersive environment from a residency that we, we stayed there for 20 days so it's a very beautiful way of working and uh, so you talked about this exhibition now already about cooking i think we forgot to say that some of these are fried is that true you fried these no, the, the, those two sculptures the, these, those are not fried those are like bioplastic and the previous uh, image, the blue and greenish one, I was also playing, I don't know, trying to figure out a kind of presence of the body. Because mm -hmm. to me, most of the time, it's not like, as you were discussing and saying before, you know, I'm trying, I don't know, maybe because I'm very shy, maybe because I, I need to be by myself sometimes, not to involve people, I don't know, with examples not with metaphors no. but with examples and this idea is that the the idea behind those work is that you can do by yourself at home no so you can go back home and do it by yourself so you can make yourself free in the kitchen yeah. and also frying was very important because frying you know we are living in a specific crazy moment of i don't know our society where uh, the chefs and the cooks are stars and it seems that you have this is totally related with the economical crisis no you have to help yourself through the body so no you're not able you're not able to pay the rent but you want to afford a very expensive dinner so to prove that you're healing yourself no but that's not my idea of kitchen my idea of cooking is about uh togetherness it's about riding a diet as a sculpture because the diet is the real sculpture that everybody of us we are doing you no know? because it's not an object but it's a software through which we are actually really designing reality so our connection and relationship with animals with other animals with living plants with the market and and so on I think the the your other project is going very towards this uh, intimacy and uh, and doing it at home with the, with these shoe soles made with bread. Yeah, this is this is um is still a work in progress. Never um, never released. I will say if I mm. put this way and. Um, I don't know where, you know, sometimes where, where are, I don't know if I have to ask you about your ideas, mm -hmm. where are your ideas coming from? No, it's always such a silly question. Pe people are asking us, no, how oh, mm -hmm. this idea came to your mind? No, 
So yeah. When you said the, the intimacy of, and the person and the marks of the of the individual and just doing uh -huh. it from home, I immediately uh, I thought of these these shoes and uh, how these it's a sort of a symbol of commodity and that uh, it's a lot of time quoted and used to refer to uh, personality as well and uh, uh, aesthetic choices mm -hmm. how how yeah. shoes are so such a universal. Of um, infinite possibilities that can represent our taste and our sort of view of the world. Sometimes, so, um, you know, I was before this conversation. I was thinking about some clever uh, words and something clever to to be said. You no, know? and I think that the idea of constraints is always very important for a sculpture or for an artist. You no, know? giving yourself rules, regulation, but on top of it constraints like limitations like borders mm -hmm. and um, so sometimes it's not just about the idea because ideas are very easy but they are not very good friends because when you when you are in doubt when you have, when you need to de to deliver something ideas are running away from you so you need to have a kind of a no uh, approach you can rely on because it comes from a lot of struggles you had previously and i don't know i do believe in matter and year after year i do believe in very uh i don't know easy cheap basic matter it's also a way of creating my support to democracy i would say and mm -hmm. uh, and the bread like frying no you were asking me about frying frying is a very stupid way of cooking you don't need to, you don't need to be clever you don't need to follow any recipe you can be in Vucciria in palermo you can be in hong kong you can be in japan and having a, a beautiful no fry very light um, fried and whatever so it belongs to humankind mm -hmm. and also bread Bread is a way of mashing, smashing things all together and doing and pouring ideas into, into something with your very ends. And this is magic, no? It's magical. Yeah. Totally. And um, I like how you use these uh, natural uh, creatures, like from the sea, you know, to also. Yeah, I, I the... just. The way the way it first invented thinking about these uh, creatures and and their their specific uh, texture and function, um, and then we apply it into a technology that uh, it's interesting. This jumps in uh, symbols and the uh, functionality that take place in these bread shoes. I wanted to create a kind of an homage to the idea of walking, dispersion. Mm -hmm. We are humans. Sometimes I really need to go back to to the roots, to the real roots. So to understand who who I am, I need to understand who we are. And the idea of that human beings, we, we conquer the world because we are cooking with flames and because we are walking so much. And the idea of walking needs implies the idea of migrations, the idea of the identity as a flux. Now, a few years ago, I did a show like oh, already eleven years ago. My so one a show, a show I did was called "Identity is a Cloud." You no, know? and I still believe in this idea. So I wanted to create um, an homage to this idea of um, flux. So shoes made out of bread, because the bread is the maybe it's the essence of being humans somehow, because bread implies technology, implies cities, implies being all together in a larger group of um, yeah, people. And, and it's a daily thing. It's, sure. Yeah. Perfect. No, you go back to the issue of the issue of diet, no, something that really constructs not just your body, but your technology and the way you are spending time with the, you know, it's actually casting, not just your idea, but your proper society, no? And then I decided to imply animals that are not really walking, like octopuses, fishes, and these kind of things, no? So the sea is the only place, 
So our Earth, our planet is made out of sea, of water, and then you have some little piece of land. Yeah. But most of the time we pretend it's the opposite. You no, know? oh, and there's also a little sea. You no, know? but the ocean. You no, know? first yeah. of all, the ocean is a woman, and then the ocean is the planet, and then we have some. So I decided to pay a lot of attention to to other animals living in the water. Yeah. And um, that, we're going to go back to these shoes because uh, I want to show later another project you're working on. But uh, you said the land and the rocks and uh, um, I wanted to share a project uh, that touches yeah. cooking and, uh, and these rocks, uh, which I did with my partner, Liza Colin. And um, based on stop share. I need to find this. I'm going to share a small video first, um, which shows a way of cooking, which is basically cooking plastic into rocks uh, or fake rocks. I don't know if you, I think it's okay. Mm -hmm. And you, this is from a project where we replicated marble from uh, waste plastics uh, in uh, an effort to build the uh, pictures uh, that were imitating marble inlays and it was a very interesting like like you said uh, quite a shy practice of going into the domestic and finding uh, the useless objects transforming them it's a little bit like cooking uh, the leftovers in your house and uh, um, and basically, um, this then went to um, show, show. and can you see this? Yeah, 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 sure. Colorful things. Um, the, okay, so we we build we cooked these uh, uh, slates of plastic like they were cakes. We actually called them cakes. We decided to to this was the origin so we collected many types of plastic of the same color and then like you saw in the video we saw in the video we melted them and produced these which uh, sort of resemble marble uh, both aesthetically but also in a very accelerated version and also in uh, in the essence of sort of being uh, subjected to a lot of pressure, a lot of heat, which happens in the rocks over a long, long time. But this uh, was done very fast and produced this sort of similar effect, which then we applied to these, uh, these pictures um, that uh, were reflecting on the, the role of uh, all this mass uh, of objects we have produced uh, so far and uh, digging down uh, it's sort of uh, it's uh, it's not the best uh, it's, it's not uh, viable for anymore and uh, we have a crying excavator and the view and the shiny mountain here and um, and these are all the pieces from the this exhibition which were which happened last year in London, mm -hmm. where we basically we basically recycled uh, valuable trash into uh, some um, presumably luxurious items and uh, using uh, cutting pieces uh, one by one like a little puzzle. Yeah. And this uh, <laughs> strangely uh, was similar in a way of making the sugar and making a complex recipe and assembling these make me think about you know the very ancient middle ages windows from churches when you have the metal structure keeping yeah. together this this glass yeah. you know colorated glasses yeah yeah we also look a lot at the religious uh, um altar pieces and we have a lot of them in sicily probably you saw them which also in Florence, of course, with the Pietre Dure. Yes, of course. Yeah. So this whole referencing this whole te techniques uh, 
of the Renaissance Italy I mean, and the, the beyond. And um, you know, just uh, recreating the sky and the pieces of the uh, trees uh, with the association of color and, uh, and volumes uh, of the of this pieces of marble. How big are these uh, pieces? They are. Do you have an idea? This size, with like 40, 40 centimeters okay. by 20. Like an A A3 sheet of paper, more with or less. less. Maybe like okay. Cool, thank you. Yeah, a bit bigger than a lot of people. They are, um, they are uh, quite, uh, quite small, but uh, the amount of work needed was very, very, uh, shocking um, for the whole process of the, it was quite a new mind blowing process we, we did with Eliza I mean I hope she's been watching us now and um, then to sort of follow this I prepared this long list of uh, strange uh, sculptures now that I kept finding in in this past month, uh, all this conversation of, of regeneration and regrowth and recycling uh, um, made me see these things more pre more more evidently around. Um, was mm -hmm. started to get fascinated with this regrowing trees that were just cut uh, or died without. Uh, we don't we don't need to know why, but uh, somehow some people decided to plant things inside creating this beautiful uh, combination of different species and, and um, which uh, started to be very present in my research here in Rome and uh, made me start uh, more a um, more linguistic approach and the historical approach not linguistic about the role of um, of woods in even in the cities and uh, and this uh, and I started to see them as a uh, little oracles or powerful symbols of uh, an endless life to say some to call it in a, in a positive way and then uh, this led me to to start uh, drawing these uh, saints and these encounters that. Uh, were <laughs> showing uh, that there'll be a, the finished picture later on that shows the saints uh, that fail to kill uh, nature um, for our baseless research on uh, on the, um, the sacred woods of uh, of uh, Rome and uh, beyond, but specifically Rome and uh, how the pagan the pagan uh, cult cults were eradicated with. Uh, in the advent of Christianity. And I was uh, trying to develop this counter history where, where the plants uh, actually wins back and is not subdued anymore to the decisions of the priests and the saints and, and the popes. So I, I started, of course, this was uh, the, init the init initial drawing uh, and then this came. Are all informed by the seeing these uh, scenes in the city, which is uh, very brutal for plants, but uh, with their time and the patience, uh, they always come back. And uh, there's more and more, and um, yeah, and um, I'll, I'll go past and show this this workshop which we did, uh, where I bas we basically decided to plant as well, like like what the people have done in the past, try and find other dead trees where we could put our own seeds. And this was a workshop I led uh, here at Castro in, in October, where mm -hmm. we either made seed bombs and we, we threw them. Maybe I can do this and you can see there is a bomb with the brown. <laughs> and um, this was the moment of making them with clay and um, earth from Rome and seeds from Rome as well. So we, I decided to just pick up seeds from the 
walking around and we found, I found olives, I found the, I found the bay, a lot of bay, leaf, bay tree and the other plants. And then we went for a walk and talked about this uh, sites where the sacred woods used to, used to be venerated and uh, there used to be little sanctuaries called the Lu Lu Luci, Luci Romani, Lupus, from the name of the clearings inside the woods. And apparently there was uh, one of each. For, there was one for each uh, hill of Rome. So we, we walked through the Circo Massimo the, and we basically, uh, of course, Rome didn't need this too much, but we, we had an interesting conversation and I was reading these passages about the sacred woods and we could see this uh, landscape forming. And, and uh, here, this is me putting one inside the, uh, another tree try and, and replicate. We also marked each of them so we we'll, maybe we'll see them growing the, in the spring. Um, and, and this is the painting that resulted from the drawings of this uh, saint and focusing more on the, the, the trioste pri, the way I call it. And, uh, and the saint losing his uh, sanctity, let's say. Um, which is a cycle of paintings I'm going to develop in the coming months. Like if we are after talk, if we want to talk about some little future projects, um, so maybe now we, if I want to ask you about these beautiful prints on apples and the use of use a lot of organic matter in, in your work. Yeah, no, I was thinking about, um, I don't know if it was, a, if I'm allowed to call performance what I saw or the action you did in Rome. Mm. Was it a performance for you? No, it was a um, workshop. Okay. You can call it a workshop. I felt like it was a performance. I was reading, I was wearing a, like a robe. I was pretending to be a shaman and um, sort of guiding uh, this experience mm. but it was um, yeah more like maybe a shepherd so we're shepherding people and uh, t trying to teach and, and about this ancient past um, also talking about the pine and the, the rituals of the pine in Rome I see the, of course yeah. say in between in between a performance and a workshop no to me, it's quite complicated to reply to your, to answer your question about my use, my idea of mm. nature on how and why I'm involving this kind of materiality. I don't know. Yeah, maybe it's... Uh, I started doing art or trying to be into the art or to get into the arts, not for not being alone. Mm. creating kind of bridges or connection with other people with other something and then year after year now it's more than i don't know 15 17 years that i'm working as a professional artist i realized that we are alone but not because of me being alone because of coronavirus and being isolated in front of the screen no, I think that our um, connection with nature, with other animals, it's very complicated. No, let's let let's put it this way. You know, um, the new uh, animal rights movement and all the attention and the new uh, sensibility and focus that emerged in the second part of the last century emerge in the same very same moment where uh, people tr started seeing UFO in the sky. And this is very interesting, no? Because after the um, nuclear holocaust, we understood that we are alone, totally alone, that 
the world before us was finished. So also our idea of nature, our society now trying to create new connection, new kind of, you no, know, mind the gap, as they say, you know, between us and trees and the green, it's very complicated because most of the time it's like nostalgia, you no. Know? It's like thinking about your girlfriend, but the story is over. So to me, using nature, trying to, it's, it's a way to understand who we are. It's like a very, uh, I don't know, bittersweet, but also harmed mirror. It's not, it's not simple, it's complicated. So <clears throat> these, for instance, these prints are prints of, um, a workshop that Paul Klee, the painter, did at the Bauhaus, you now trying to understand the nature of the circle and the circle into nature, you know, and geometry and, and reality and so on. And I decided to overimpose, you now I overimposed this geometry to real nature, so to apples. These are apples, I cut it in, sl in slices, and then I went to my uh, beloved printer and I asked him to print directly with the UV ray cured uh, printer. That, and so a very technological kind of machines applied to apple. Because or maybe it's not um, Adamo and Eve, or even Adamo, maybe it's the Bible, maybe it's the, you no know, an apple a day gives the doctor away. So I don't know, but also the idea of a circle inscripted into nature. It's beautiful. So, you are inscripting um, geometry onto something like something that has mastered geometry that we could also say in the apple itself. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And, but it's uh, also true that we never understand what comes first, you know if ge geometry is coming from reality or if we are, we are projecting something on reality no so mm. wittgenstein was saying the limits of my language are the limits of my word no and geometry is a limit of our reality we are not really able to go behind this kind of thing so it's a grid we need we love we admire because also now the numbers are creating the screen where we are, um, where we are, are actually living now. But yeah, I don't know. Sometimes it's, I was talking about constraints. No, I need to to feel the limit, to touch it, yeah. to smell it. And here, this is after some time. Yeah, yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah, the the, the first picture. Is like the, 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 I don't know, a few hours after the print. And then this is after, I don't know, more than a summer, five, six, seven months. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, I also found this project. Uh, mm -hmm found really beautiful and fascinating with this mixture of uh, but in, in this case you're mixing two very advanced technologies the apple and the uv cured print on anything and here it's, it's like you are using uh, technologies of mm, already existing in, in organic and inorganic nature um, yeah, well, it was 2013 and I was working on this a feature film, Glauco Camaleo, I did. And uh, it's basically a kind of a journey, an odyssey dedicated to water as a flux. And I decided to make some sculptures to understand what I was trying to do in, in, the, in a movie with moving images, with stabilizing all my thoughts into a shape and i had the idea of i don't know creating something in between uh, natural realms no so you have the net the, the, the vegetal and the mineral merging in a totally unexpected way going behind technological and also natural determinism no so what's that and 
but I also like that almost each work of mine is an example. You can do it by yourself if you want. So this is very cheap also to, to do it again. It's copper sulfate. It's a, it's a salt. So you create um, you know, very salty water. You put the, something into that, also a piece of fabric, whatever you want, a coin, whatever. And after a few days, it depends from the salt. You can also use uh, cooking, kitchen salt. And it takes a long time. And then you, if you go to on the on the previous in the previous image, the one with two colors, you, the right hand side is has been colorated with the common salt, and then the green is coming from uh, sorry, the the pink is coming from I don't know where, but uh, yeah. And uh, and then I apply this technique to um, vegetal leftovers. I would say. Mm. I was also thinking about uh, this beautiful novel by James Ballard, mm -hmm. the writer, yeah, where you no know, the um, crystal forest, if I remember right. So the idea of a transformation, of a metamorphosis of reality, and metamorphosis is always very present in my in my research, but also in yours. You no, know, how to yeah. know, to trigger something. I also. Um really uh, admire this generosity in, in not using the magic or tricks that uh, sometimes you have in the arts like you are just share the what these things things is and how this can be done in your house and something i really like as well and i always uh, tell people everything that is behind the work and no, to me, this came out from, I don't know, kind of a self-awareness, no? I was trying to understand the kind of artist I wanted to be or realizing who I am. And it's really about using art as a way to grow together with people. So I'm not really into, so sometimes, uh, for instance, people are misunderstanding metamorphosis with alchemy understanding alchemy in the no it's a very it's a kind of a peril because alchemy can also be understood like you no know, mambo jumbo people in middle ages trying to conquer gold and with secrets and so on but that, that that's not the way it is so alchemy is like proto chemists you no know? so my one of my heroes is primo levi that survived to the holocaust actually because he was a chemist and because he was a chemist, he was uh, able to speak German. And because he was a chemist, he understood what to do. And one of my beloved books by him is the uh, Sistema Periodico, no? the periodical system where the novel of reality is rewrote. Uh, and so being a chemist is about sharing knowledge. No, it's not about keeping it for yourself. Exactly. Yeah. It's not mysterious or no. Receiving or um, yeah, that's a very very beautiful side of the work that comes out, and, and I'm, I'm I'm assuming once you see them in, for real, they must be quite uh, um, this must be quite visible. But we are seeing everything on on photos, <laughs> and um, um, so. Maybe now I'll come. Uh, yeah, I love, I love this picture because there's a real background. It's not a white limbo. No, there's a reality strikes back here. It's a real, uh, it's a real functioning object uh, bench that also again with my girlfriend we produced. Uh... Hello, Julia. Just to make you aware that in like two minutes, I think it's uh, time for questions. We mm -hmm. have already. Uh, a couple uh, of questions. Sorry, I interrupt you, but oh, I will speed up. Okay. Um, so we produced this bench um, mm -hmm. in the leftovers from the previous project, uh, which you can see here. We embedded in, in creating this uh, of, um, solid uh, sculpture using again with attention with using uh, natural materials or something that wouldn't harm uh, we decided to we produce this very toxic material this new multi-plastic uh, object that uh, you know 
using different types of plastic. We some of it burned, some of it didn't, it didn't burn right. So we it's impossible to do anything with this um, in, unless we put it inside an artwork. So we decided to insert them in, into the stex, texture of uh, the bench. And um, as well here we we will start to thinking about uh, how things things that last and and things that don't last and uh, we we had a conversation before and we we have uh, uh, different views on, on this topic which is really fascinating and, and we, we we made things so, so so they they might last well so you are very happy when they break you you, you, you say to me you are interested in seeing them evolve and well i'm not actually i'm not very happy because if you <laughs> are saying this my gallery will show up and no but i mean without jokes i will put i will say that i'm very interested in energy mm. so doing art as a, as a part of the, of the material energetic field so mm. sometimes the energy is condensated and coagulated in an object and it's supposed to last almost forever we hope and sometimes energy is is a flux so if you pretend that this object will survive you're not really respecting energy and and the energy you put it into that and that's okay so we are sometimes we are um, uh, misunderstanding art with the history of art and the history of art is made by leftovers no something that survived but it's not that the artists we know so well we're doing only what we are allowed to see now also in Raina sense no Raffaello was doing a lot of ephemeral works with bread uh, artists were involved in a lot of ceremonial like construction for no events religious events real events related to power and so on yeah so sometimes also no sometimes also a lot of performer artists they decided not to take any documentation because otherwise you're killing the energy you no know? if you want to be there you have to attend to be part of of the thing and that's it yeah yeah we we get uh, we get um, <laughs> then we get things that uh, have they, they limit them. I like when people are when things sorry are aging like people mm. so What's what happening? do you think is gonna happen to your bench in I don't know 30 years uh, it's kind of a probably become dust <laughs> less okay. less for somebody like but it's uh, accepted. It's accepted, but it becomes dust. He has, uh, he had the presence in that moment, and it doesn't, it doesn't need to, it doesn't need to be there forever. And this is also quite, quite nice. And it's like you said, quite similar to, to, to being human and being animal, being something. The limited time with the with the life, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, these were the last pictures. But uh, if you wanted to share your yeah, the works you showed on previously about the bread and the shoes made of bread and those shoes, these are like works and never as you see as you can see this is the studio this is one of the tables of the studio and these works never left the studio and these are like sneak peeks i'm sharing on instagram of something that never really uh became real so they're like cloud and the rain is yet to come <laughs> i will say so mm -hmm. yeah the idea the, those are gonna become photos for instance this is gonna be a picture and yeah, as you can see, the, and this is a sculpture where um, a very, I don't know, colorated and fancy and aggressive also, passive aggressive Nike shoes mm -hmm. becomes, I don't know, the pedestal for um, something. 
you know, this impossible marriage between organic and not organic. And yeah. It seems like they can only last together in, in knowledge and uh, never in, in a practical work. Yeah, I don't know. Everything started sometimes ideas that, I don't know, you have an intuition and uh, I don't know, maybe two seasons ago, three years ago in Milano, everybody started wearing these very big white shoes like Balenciaga and all these kind of things. And it was so funny to me, you know, because it's like the, the SUV, the big cars. <laughs> You no, know, they pretend to be armless, but then they're very, you know, it's, it's aggressiveness, no? Mm -hmm. Because with a SUV, if you have a car accident, you, you're not having any trouble, any issue, but maybe you're killing somebody else because you're you not know, driving a tank. Mm -hmm. And also these very inflated up shoes, to me, they were, oh my God, where are you going to go? You no, know, to Afghanistan? So what's, what's the game? And uh, so I decided to, I don't know, to subvert this kind of discourse with uh, the power of animals and the wiseness of animals. And also it's full of irony, it's loaded with a lot of things. And also you know, we pretend to be ecologically aware and then we, you know, we go for other choices. And, uh, and also you know, octopus and these kind of things. Of course, it's a very, I don't know, slippery kind of thing, no? working mm. with nature and then using real animals. So I know it's, it's complicated, but that's the way it is. I really like to put myself into troubles and to, to understand reality by making also mistakes or to touch um, invisible nerves, let's say so. Yeah, they, they work. Yeah. Collage is a very interesting word for me because I think this is the century of the collage because collage is made out of, I'm also thinking about what you, um, the part of your research you share with us tonight, no? Leftovers, fragments, piece of plastic, garbage. No, we are living in a, in a world it's made out of fragments like fossils of you don't know what. And plastic is actually is a fossil, no? Plastic is dead animals collapsed by an unbearable amount of time and pressure. Guys, unfortunately, I really have to interrupt you for a moment because we yeah. got lots of questions. So I am happy to share them with you. Uh, uh, Pietro, you seem to work really well in partnership with other people. How do you leave this kind of exchange in your process? And do you have any collaboration in future plans? Um, I think collaboration is a beautiful moment where you can go out of your own practice and um, respond to somebody else. And also uh, use both, both of the Part, people in the collaboration uh, uh, knowledge to achieve something that's unique and uh, basically, yeah, basically unique and unachievable otherwise. Um, and I really like this aspect and has made me do beautiful things in the past. And uh, it's it can be quite a, a process uh, that's difficult and uh, and that one needs to learn to understand the boundaries and freedom and uh, where to start off from somebody's somebody else's thing um, so i have any other collaboration in future plans um we are we have some drafts but uh, no nothing is set but uh, it's yeah it's always beautiful so, to, to, I think I like this con the concept of going out of the practice and uh, doing something completely different and re rewriting the, the way one works every time. Yeah, I hope that answers the question. For both, you talked about chemists being people who give back to society. 
How do you see the role of the artist in that scope? So I think when there's finding the role of the artist, it's not easy when one thinks of objects. And uh, often being an artist means to perform around the object. And uh, therefore this, the, the whole approach can, can help you be, I think, I think helps being also detached from the actual object without even, without needingly uh, requiring to, for the object to speak this relationship to society. So, yeah, I think it's a choice, and but at the same time, um, it doesn't. Some, sometimes it seems to be a pushing topic, but uh, there are other so many other ways, and uh, unless the, your con interest in your work, unless the concept of your work is uh, not. It doesn't get undermined. Uh, it, 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 it unbalances too much towards this uh, gift to the society. And unless that happens, it's, uh, it's better to... It's, they, they, are, they are separate uh, things, but they can be together, depending. Uh, that's a very confused answer, sorry. <laughs> Maybe Luca also has a better answer. <laughs> it's quite I don't know. I, I, I believe that art born, was born when human beings decided, when we realized that, when we understood death and we decided to make something to, I don't know, not to be defeated by death. No, so to formalizing this because art is about giving shape to something no most of the time we talk we pretend to follow ideas but our task is to give shape to formalize so there are many ways through which artists can help or sometimes not help or cast for sure society to all my students i always repeat that the whole the whole zone whole do not exist it's not a whole it's a beautiful formalization no because if you if you're talking about whole you're talking about uh something a missing object you're talking about desires you're talking about sex you're talking about many things no holes we know holes and so the whole zone whole is a beautiful artist formalization that casted our surviving we hope no so that's a beautiful way to reply to this question no so that's why i do believe in examples because we are making tools uh what exactly uh, exactly does the realistic element add to the work which make it better i don't know how to read the um, that's the word realistic no but in terms of i don't know i will say that i It's a matter of identity. It's just about that. No. Uh, the aging of things. Now, if you think about the Japanese um, society and tradition, a very old wooden cup with uh, um, generations and generations and generations of the same family have been drinking tea. Now, aged so much because you have a lot of experience and human beings and thoughts and whatever. No, condensated in this flux. So it's not just whole, it's full of meanings. It's loaded by this you know, uh, line of experiences. So opening up the door, you know, I love so much the Italian word and I have to say it in Italian, you no, know, opening up to spiffery, you no, know? the spiffery is something you also see with the you no know, the the thin air that pass through the gaps in the in the underneath a door or in the window no that's reality no you can't stop it it's there so sometimes we need the white limbo to make our sculpture even more visible or i don't know 
floating in a holy modernism, but reality strikes back and reality is it's chaos. You can't stop it and it's full of life and it never goes, never stops. And yeah, that's it. What can I add to this beautiful answer? <laughs> Um, yeah, I think realistic it uh, needs to be further defined. I don't really, it's hard for me to answer. Um, I can only think of the realistic in like relating to something that is similar, so uh, as imitated. Um, and therefore is aging in the same way of all the realistic things. Um, how much does narration and poetry come into your work? How is it relevant for both? Basically, most of the work uh, seems to just come out for um, my own research into my own self. It uh, ends up being poetry and narration, and mostly poetry. And then whenever there's a need to communicate it with with the external world, I need to employ narration, and trying to fit uh, these concepts and make them like a beautiful story. I, I quite like the the way of narration and through something like painting that is maybe the way the way you can do through painting and the pictures and the figures and relationships with, with objects in perspective. Um, yes, and poetry is the, what's in between these two things. Yeah. And it makes it fun and, uh, and physical in very difficult way, in a very difficult way to say in words. And, becomes material poetry and that is in between it's more or less well we are we are made out of stories and narrations and i think sculpture is just a way to talk with matter and other living creators but Talking and listening is a way for, for creating narrative system and platforms. So we are not just we humans, but all of this is made out of stories. So it's crucial, that's everything. And poetry is the, I don't know, is the golden version of it, no? Because poetry teaches about economy, no? To say very little, to say what is very much needed and that's it. And uh, it's like an achievement, no? And because poetry to me is not something you achieve, it's a way, it's a behavior, no? It's a way of being, it's an, a kind of an approach. I always remember that when Pierpaolo Pasolini was killed, uh, Ungaretti at the, um, outside the church, no, they, they're still on YouTube, it's always tears me to almost to, to, to to cry, no, it was he screams and say, uh, "Anno ucciso un poeta." They have been they killed a poet, no. Only three, four of them born in a century, no. And to me, it's such a beautiful example, no. Pier Paolo Pausolini, the po the political, the activist, the um, uh, movie maker, and what whatsoever, but the poet, you know. And because he was a poet, he was able to understand what Italy was becoming because it was a poet it was able to feel it to touch it to smell it so poetry is everything for sure thank you thank you I think we should end uh, with this beautiful <laughs> uh, I want to thank you very much Luca thank you for thinking about me and inviting me here at Castro for your wisdom and knowledge and uh, beautiful practice Let's see each other in person with or without mask as soon as possible. Exactly. <laughs>